Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering EMC World 2015. Brought to you by EMC, Brocade, and VCE. Welcome back to SiliconANGLE TV's live continuous coverage, wall to wall from EMC World 2015, here in the you know, Venetian Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, had a big fight over the weekend with uh, you know, Pacquiao and Mayweather, um, and uh, you know, getting into the meat of things here at, at, at EMC World, our sixth year here at the show, um, and we're focusing on the Oracle solution, and I bring up the fight analogy because uh, we've got Sam Lucido here, the <laughs> Senior Manager of Database Solutions Technical Marketing <laughs> at EMC here, and in the last segment we talked about how EMC and Oracle are partnering together. Well, from the storage standpoint, there's a little bit of fighting, so Sam, welcome back to theCUBE. Well, thank you very much. It's you know, my pleasure to be here, obviously. It's great. Yeah, we really appreciate it. So, uh, you, you know, there's, there's, the, there's the, the age of co-opetition and sometimes there's frenemies even uh, in this <laughs> industry. Uh, Steve Chambers, my co-host here for the segment, laughing at some of this. You've been on many sides of some of these wars. Um, so, Sam, you know, talk to me a little bit about that relationship between EMC and Oracle and where you play into it. Well, you know, it is a very good relationship. Let me just start out by saying that. We have like over 80,000 common customers that use Oracle databases with EMC storage and, and solutions and we work very well together. There's a lot of uh, integration points between Oracle and EMC. So, you know, the two companies get together quite well. Of course, there's the uh, collaboration side and then there's a little bit of the competition side as well. So. Yeah, so, so I'm, I'm sure if we were to ask Larry Ellison, he has great respect for all of his competitors but wants to crush them all. So, <laughs> you know, a a absolutely. So, you know, you're heavily on the performance side. D take us through a little bit about what you've been working on lately. Sure, sure, sure. You know, so I've been do recently doing some analysis between uh, Extreme IO and, for example, the FS1. It's, it's kind of an interesting comparison to uh, look at those side by side. Um, and, and they go in, in totally different directions, which I find really easy uh, to uh, discern. Um, Extreme IO is going in a direction of simplicity. You know, just um, being able to provision storage very quickly without much complexity, uh, relying on the all flash drives to drive performance. And then it has the enterprise features of like inline deduplication, inline compression, and thin provisioning as well, not to mention copy services. And I find, you know, the FS1 is just in the opposite direction. It's all about, um, you know, they call it the most intelligent storage array out there. I will substitute it and say the most complex storage array out there. Um, it's, it's amazing the amount of features that that array truly has. But, um, you know, I was just looking at the instructions for provisioning storage before I joined you here. And there was at least 20 steps, you know, some of them required, some of them optional. In each one of those steps, you had three to four steps involved in the selection of what you do as, as far as storage this goes. Oh, so Sam, isn't that why we have Oracle experts though? So that they can just, you know, deal with this? Or Oracle, Oracle I'm sure, will for a fee help customers out through some of this. Well, you know, you, you raise a good point. It's, 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 what direction do you want to go in? Do you want to go in the direction of simplicity, simply getting it on your data center floor? You know, a message right there in the keynote I thought was a really strong message is customers want to be able to, to use their solutions in hours not days, not weeks, you know, months. Um, they want to be able to quickly and easily provision storage for the Oracle databases and not worry about whether they have it configured correctly for performance, capacity, reliability, and recoverability, right? Um, so it's, it's, it's that message that Extreme IO really hits on very well. I mean, literally, it's just three steps to provision storage, and once you provision storage, um, you know, copy services and the inline deduplication and compression just kick in, it's there. So, so you're talking about performance, and I'm thinking IO, but really, you're saying the performance, to de the time to deploy, right? You're saying the time to configure and use the thing, that's a performance character. Is that what you're saying as well? That's just yeah, that's right. I, it's twofold. It's operational simplicity and yeah. performance combined, right? Um, so with Extreme IO, it's just as I said, three steps. Now, I'll face it, let's say the FS1 does have this thing called application profiles. And application profiles are the capability to overlay what storage should look like with predefined configurations, okay? But it, application profiles, in other words, mask the complexity, okay? Um, and it, it gets you to where you want to be faster as long as your application or database fits the profile, right? If it doesn't fit the profile, then you're back to tuning and trying to get things to work. 
And of course, there's all kinds of complexity there. You have to determine whether the priority level of queuing should be premium, high, medium, or low, or archive. Um, you have to figure out whether the uh, database or application should be configured for read ahead, um, write, or, or you know what rate volumes, for example, you have to configure. So it's kind of interesting the direction they're going in. I almost think they want storage to work like a database. You have all these choices out there, but you know it's it's not a database. People are really looking for that simplicity. Yeah. So so it's interesting, Sam. When I hear you talking about this, when I think of all flash arrays in some ways, it should be able to just take performance off the table. It shouldn't have to worry about it. For most applications, it should just be more performance than we ever need. As we know, there's never elimination of bottlenecks, but it moves it. There's other things you have to consider. But for database, it, it sounds like there's still some tuning and work that needs to be done, um, even in an all flash array configuration. You, you know, I think you hit upon something. I, I gave a session this morning, and you know, it was interesting because a lot of customers were very vocal um, about what they want. And interestingly enough, a lot of customers said, hey, we're using Extreme IO right now. We put the database on Extreme IO and we got immediate performance benefit. I said, you know, they did ask me some questions in terms of configuration, what should I do, how can I improve performance? And before I even addressed their questions, I asked them a question right back. I said, how's performance right now? And all of them said, great. I said, then why change it, right? Why, why pull around with your database configuration or the storage configuration to try to improve things a little bit further? It doesn't make sense. If you're able to drive 150,000 IOPS from a couple of lungs on Extreme IO storage array, well, great. And if that works for you, terrific. You know, leave it as it is because you, you're getting great performance. So you, it sounds like you, you do quite a lot of work with workloads, with customers. Um, where can we see all this great data that you must collect? You know, a day in the life of a performance expert, right? So do you share this on the community or is it, you know, very much one-to-one -one with customers? How do you, yeah, how do no, you give your insights, I guess? It's, it's great. You know, what I like to do is I like to tweet a lot. I like to blog. Um, there's the Everything Oracle community at EMC, which is kind of a fun community. I watch your, your stuff too, not, you know, so I enjoy reading your articles and your uh, reports and things of that nature. Um, you know, getting the message out there is kind of difficult though. I mean, it, it, it's challenging because um, it, it, on one side you, you have the simplicity, operational ease of Extreme IO, and then the DBAs do love that technical deep dive stuff. You know, we're, we're, you know that, that's what makes us DBAs, right? So it's, it's a little bit of a challenge to um, try to drive that to simplicity mess. I love when they had on stage that keynote, uh, the 11 year old come on stage and actually provision storage <laughs> on a VMAX 3. I mean, that, that, was, that was awesome. Yeah, I, I mean, Sam, it, it, it's sometimes really difficult when it's easy. I mean, it's just like, you know, press this button and you're done. Or, plug it in and it auto configures this. It's like, they're like, what What do you mean? That, that's not the way I do things, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know? Yeah, that, no, you're, you're exactly right. You know, every storage array or every solution, everybody wants that easy button to be able to press, right? And, and just get things up and running. You know, and, and the other thing about that is it's not just performance. You know, you have, every production database has clones and copies of production databases. And, and the nice thing about Extreme I.O. is that every copy you make of a production database uh, takes absolutely no space. The copy services are all metadata related. Um, either, there's nothing written to disk until there's a, a, a data difference between production and your copy. And then when there's a data difference, that gets compressed. Um, and there's just one way to do it. It's that easy button on, on Extreme I.O. that you need to press to make copies. Now let me contrast it for you a little bit. Our, our competitors have two types of copies. They have a clone, uh, clone lung and they have a volume copy. Now, a clone lung is like a snapshot, okay? But the thing about a clone lung is, is that you have to use the same QoS plus properties as the source database. So if your production database is using Flash, you have to use Flash for that snapshot. Um, the other alternative is what you call a volume copy. Uh, that's a byte for, uh, block for block copy. In other words, you're taking up twice the capacity making a copy of the database. There you can change the priority settings for the QoS so that you can have a different uh, performance configuration. With Extreme IO, conversely, it's just simply make that copy, you get 100% of the performance. No complex steps to remember. So, are you more of a DBA or more of a storage guy? Or, you know, it sounds like you know a bit of both worlds. Actually, I do, I do. I worked for Oracle for 10 years on the delivery side of the business. Really enjoyed my time at Oracle, it's a great company. And then I was lucky enough to join EMC about five to six years ago. So I know both uh, databases and storage pretty well. Do you see that as a trend? Um, you know, do you see more people 
like you out there who's, who's got knowledge of an application and knowledge of some infrastructure and that's a bit of a magic mix. You know. it, it's interesting you mentioned that, I do, I really do. It, it's interesting because I think databases and stores are kind of converging. I mean, look at what Oracle's doing. They're doing some fantastic stuff with like 12C multi-tenant databases. The capability for a DBA to use a SQL command and instantly provision another copy of a database. I mean, pluggable databases are pretty awesome. And that integrates with EMC storage, right? Um, so I do see the two kind of converging. Um, one thing I think EMC is doing very well is they're making it very easy for DBAs to learn the storage. Okay, I really do. Um, as they showed the BMAX 3 on stage, you know, you have those um, service levels, you know, premium, diamond, what, what have you. Um, it, it's just so easy to provision the storage now that the DBA can do it. The other thing I'll mention just really quickly is, is that you have plugins, and all of our plugins are free. So if a DBA wants to work with EMC storage, whether it be Extreme IO or something else, um, they can do that for free now. And, and it just plugs in right into Oracle Enterprise Manager 12C, and you can start looking at the configuration of storage and seeing what the performance is like on the storage level. No storage administrator required, right? No storage administrator required. That's absolutely right. Wow, that's, um, that's quite now, scary. Now, don't take me wrong. I don't think the storage administrator is going to disappear anytime soon. <laughs> All right, so I don't want anybody attacking me when I leave here. Yeah, so Samson, we're, we're here. This kind of storage is a big deal at this show, I think. That, that logo on your shirt, too. Um, so, you know, Sam, we're running cl close to the end here. You know, Oracle makes lots of statements. I, I, earlier this year, they, they announced new products and they said, you know, our infrastructure is just going to be, you know, I think it's 30 or 50 percent cheaper than like basically a B block, as I think was their number one competitor out there. Um, there there's obviously a lot of nuance as to how you measure things. You know, how, how do you look at what you hear from Oracle and, uh, you know, <laughs> what, 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 what misconceptions do you think are out there in the marketplace? <laughs> That's a big question right there. Yeah. I, I'm going to say this, um, when you look at Oracle and their marketing message, um, sometimes it's more important what they don't say versus what they do say. And, and you know, my advice generally to companies and to DBAs or anybody comparing storage types is look at the manuals. I mean, honestly, it's, it's one of the best ways to compare. If, if you look at an uh, Extreme IO manual, it's about 40, 50 pages. That's about it. If you look at the manual for a, a competitor storage array and it's 200 pages or 300 pages, it kind of gives you the idea of the simplicity and the operational ease um, versus the complexity of the other. So, I, I don't look at the slides, look at the manuals, read the manuals, that it, it tells the entire story. Good bit All right, well, well Sam, re really appreciate you bringing the, uh, both the storage and the, the uh, DBA viewpoint here. Um, we won't tell the storage administrators that maybe the applications <laughs> are taking over the world, even though we know that the whole reason that infrastructure exists is to deliver the application. So, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, great to dig into really this database segment here. Uh, excited to have a customer on next to kind of wrap up uh, this spotlight. So stay with us, we'll be right back after this quick break.